They are covering these finals extensively, talking a lot of basketball. So the thing that we're going to do here is uh, each of these guys is going to give out a pick and we will grade their bets to see what each other thinks. So Matt Moore, uh, we'll go to Jay first. We'll go to Jay Money first. Jay, uh, a series bet that you would like to give. And Matt Moore, you weigh in with your thoughts. Yeah, I like Derek White to lead the series in threes, uh, plus 330 in this one. Like it all the way down to plus 270 if you have to uh, take that number. But uh, when Derek White is on the floor, he's out there to shoot threes. Like, it's literally to play defense and shoot threes as well. He's been the most consistent three-point shooter in this series. He's been the most consistent three-point shooter for the uh, Celtics as well all season long. Um, I do think a ton of attention will be to stop uh, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and Chris Porzingis as well, which leaves Derek White just sitting on the three-point line, just, just waiting for his opportunity to make four or five threes a game here so um i will take somewhat of it's not really a long shot obviously luca takes a ton of threes as well but i do think Derek white will have more success from the long range in this series Matt more your grade on this one please yeah i'm gonna give this an a plus i love this bet so one of the things that, that when i went back and i did the film on not just this season's games between the celtics and mavericks but even if you go back to last season there's a lot of trigger actions or what i call leverage shots which that means that the defense is basically saying we're willing to give you this like we'll surrender this and if we lose by that then we'll deal with that if we're getting killed by it we'll deal with it later White's on the receiving end of a lot of that. So for instance, if two guys are open on the weak side and defenders closing out and it's Porzingis or White, you'd be surprised how often they were closing out to Porzingis. If they were, it was him or Brown, they're closing out to Brown. They were daring Derek White to hit some of these threes. It's not that like there's a good option here. All the Celtics can shoot. And so White winds up in the position in a lot of the floor spacing where he's going to have a lot of these opportunities. Luca, I think, is the rightful favorite here because he jacks up a ton of them. I don't necessarily love Luca's three point shot profile in terms of the ones that he chooses. They're all contested, they're all tough. And while he hits a ton of them because he's Luka Doncic, if he has a little bit of a down series, even if he has a little bit of a down couple of games, shoots two of eight from three point or two of 10, that, that opens up the door for one of these Celtics to take it. Tatum is going to take a lot of those same kind of contested threes. White's going to get better looks. And I do think there's a good chance that Derek White has one to two huge games from three-point range, which can pull this. I love this bet. A plus for me. Okay. With my quick follow-up to Jay with, on Tatum, and you mentioned the contested looks. I hear you on that. But is it also fair to ask, he's only shooting 29%. If he turns a corner, does Tatum worry you at all from the Celtics side of it? Tatum does not worry me at all. I think he okay. needs to drive into the paint in this series. I do not want to see Tatum uh, shoot a ton of threes. He has not been good at all from three. And so um, I think most of his success kind of comes from mid-range and getting to the paint. And I think he's going to be more of a facilitator and rebounder in this particular series. I don't think they need him mainly to shoot threes. If you're wide open, shoot it. But taking a contested three, like you as a Boston backer, you do not want to see that. Like let, leave that to Jalen Brown and uh, Derek White and even Porzingis. But no Tatum threes, please don't don't shoot any of them okay fair enough all right let's move on matt moore will provide the pick and then jay money will give out a grade yeah let's go drew holiday over four and a half assists per game so the mavericks let holiday roam a lot in this matchup they're basically fine with whatever drew holiday wants to do they're actually going to put in some sequences they're going to put the centers on him and dare him to take open threes. Thing is that Drew's really smart and Drew's gonna drive off of those closeouts and be able to attack the rim and then kick out to shooters. They're also gonna use Drew as a screener because it puts, if they try and hide Luka Doncic on Drew, which I think they'll do a little bit in the series as well, you put Drew as the screener and you put Luka into that action where he's uncomfortable guarding as a big and that lets Drew Holiday slip to the rim. I've got clips on this on an article on actionnetwork.com. In all these types of situations, there's a good opportunity here for Drew. And then, look, you can't build your entire stuff off of a, a prop playoff of matchup and specific sequences. So I'll say this. In transition, Drew Holiday is their best passer. He always finds great looks. He's able to weave in and out, bend the floor in transition, and find easy looks. He absolutely cooked Dallas. He went over in both of these games on this assist, on this assist line. So I love Drew Holiday over four and a half assists per game in this series. Jay Money, what say you? Great, please. 
I'm going to give it a C plus after hearing Matt uh, explain it even more in depth. I'd, I'd like to upgrade it to a B plus, but um, I do think that like if Luca's on Drew Holiday, I think they should go at Luca. I think that's the whole thing. Like uh, not enough teams do this. Lucas, he obviously shows some upside as a defender, but you first off, you need to try your best to get him in foul trouble because if not, if he's not on the floor, the Mavs will get killed. But I think whoever's guarding Luca, if it is like if he's uh, if he's guarding Holiday, I think Holiday needs to try to go at Luca. Like that's their advantage in this uh, in this game. Whoever Luca or, or Kyrie on, you need to go at them um, on the offensive end, in my opinion, man. So just to try and tire them out, we, we've seen like with guys like Anthony Edwards, when they're their best offensive player, you want to make them work on defense as well to somewhat tire them out. So um, I, I'll give it a, I'll, I'll upgrade it to a B plus after hearing Matt's breakdown, but um, I, I don't hate it. I hope it, I hope it catches. Still a passing grade, Matt. Take that. Great. But it's you not should... an F. You, he schmoozed the teacher well enough for uh for the teacher to give him an upgrade in the on the curve. Uh, Matt Moore is now up to a B plus. Uh, all right, let's go back to Jay Money. Uh, your second one, and Matt Moore will weigh in. Yeah, I like Derek Lively over five and a half rebounds in each game at plus 450. First off, I think the price is a little too long as well. But we've seen uh, Lively be the best center for the Mavs. And it's, they're doing one of these things to where they're still bringing him off the bench, but he's playing more minutes than Daniel Gafford. And he's actually one of, like, quietly one of the most important players for the Mavs. Whenever Lively's not out there, you probably want to bet against the Mavs every single time. He's averaged not, he averaged 9.3 rebounds versus the Minnesota Timberwolves. And they have a lot more size as well, with the exception of the game that he only played nine minutes and left with the concussion but um he's played more minutes than Gafford in those three big wins as well versus the Wolves with the exception of the game that he left um uh, with the concussion as well so um Lively is sneakily the actually like the starting center for the Mavs over there and I feel like five and a half rebounds uh in each game is a little too low as long as he's playing more than Gafford like he has been um I would even probably escalate it up to six and a half in each game and probably get a better price there but over five and a half in each game plus for 50 um I'll take that all day long the a front plus. court, uh, a plus. Wow. Okay. A plus. I like. I'm. I'm mad. I suggested this segment, um, because I was like, oh, this will be good. It'll create tension, and like we can clown on each other. And then he just chose all these awesome bets. Um, this is a phenomenal bet. Lively Gafford may get played off the floor in the series. Kleba might wind up playing a lot That's more in the series. Ask. Yeah. But if they're at that point, I think Dallas is in a pretty rough shape. But the other thing that Kid's done is he's gone more to two big lineups when he's had to. He's gone to Kleba at power forward next to one of the bigs, and he's preferred Lively. Lively's a better defender in space, so he can defend a little bit better in terms of switches if they have to go to that. There's all these things that Lively can bring to the table. Also, the big gap in terms of why Lively's been plus minus has been the second best since Mono Ginobili is on the offensive end. The defense has been better with him, but also the offense has been way better because of what he's able to create on the floor. And just, I love this play because, and we'll talk about this on buckets. I think the Mavericks, when the Celtics play the Mavericks, the Celtics actually put Jason Tatum on the centers to pre-switch so that if they try to run one five pick and roll, Tatum gets to switch onto Luka or Kyrie. But the problem with that is that they don't run that. Now underneath the basket, Tatum's battling Lively, who's much taller for rebound. Tatum's a big old, old big old guy, but Lively will be able to get enough of those rebounds. This line to me is incredibly soft. I love this bet at over five and a half, A plus. Okay. I'm glad you brought up Kleba because I'm curious that the front court stuff with Porzingis and his status, and then of course with, with Dallas having Kleba back and that mixture of bigs, that's a, a good breakdown by uh, both of you, regardless of the grade. Okay, one more. Matt Moore, uh, your last one, and then Jay will uh, give his grade. Celtics minus one and a half on the series win spread. So this is the win in six or fewer. So six, win in six, win in five, win in four. Uh, if Boston's going to win, I'll start right here. If Boston's going to win, it can't be in game seven. Brandon Anderson and I are on opposite sides of this where he's got no sweep, five, six, seven. I've got four, five, six, no seven, because I do not want Boston if this goes to game seven. I don't care about the history of home teams in game sevens. I don't care about the better team in game sevens. I don't care. I do not want to have to have money on Boston. I want it to already have lost the bet if we get to a game seven, so I don't have to stress about it. That's how worried I am about the Boston Celtics facing Luka Doncic in a game seven. Uh, but look, Boston's the better team here without matchup advantages. I think that the Minnesota Timberwolves are a better team than Dallas, but I bet Dallas because the matchup advantages made up for that gap in between the two teams. And we saw that play out over the course of the Western Conference Finals. The matchups for Dallas do not go their way in this series. 
the Celtics are a five out jump shooting team. They're really good at that, at those kind of things. And that does create more variance. So there will be games in the series probably where they look horrible and the Mavs beat them up. But over the course of the series also with their defense, this is a top five team on both offense and defense the entire season. They've been way better. Dallas would break all sorts of history by winning this series. They'd be the first five seed to do it. They'd be the first time that a player that led the league in usage in Luka Doncic won the NBA finals. It would be the first time that a player in the top 40 in all-time usage, won the NBA Finals. And you have all these trends where the gap between these two teams is just too wide. So I'll take Celtics minus one and a half at a plus number for the better team to win the series in six or less. Celtics minus one and a half plus 105 is the bet. Jay Money, you're great. Well, as I as I like to say, I can't talk you off, Matt. Um, I I do great this at a. a um, I do I do agree as well that the Celtics want to win this one uh, at least at least four two at the absolute max. I do think that there's a little bit of a bigger gap than a lot of people might think in this particular series. In my opinion, um, you could say that the Celtics had an easy way to the, but I, they were just playing whoever was in front of them, you know. So um, I and the Mavs had a harder, but that like that makes it better for the Celtics. They've had more they've had more rest. Um, they hadn't had to be get uh, get beat up in series like the Mavs have so um I agree that the Celtics probably like obviously you want to steal one of those um games in Dallas and in this one in six as well you don't want to you don't want to be messing around with the Mavs in game seven we saw them do it um we saw them do it to the Suns we saw it do it to uh, multiple teams man obviously not the Suns this year but uh, I think it was a couple years ago but yeah the Mavs in game seven on the road like they're not scared whatsoever and it actually like if it goes to seven you actually have to start to lean towards the Mavs because they have started to get better uh like they've gotten better and better as the course of the series so Celtics don't want to really want to mess around with these guys you want to try and end this in five or six great uh, games I agree with Matt here Matt Moore seems like a pleasure to watch a game seven with no it's, it's a lot we it's have lot. to get that on video we need that content uh game seven of the 2016 finals I like I got complaints from neighbors for the amount of noises I made at the end of that game so it was pretty wild it was a joke I, I believe that's I do believe that very much so um, game one, though, you're probably even keeled and patient, right? Uh, Matt Moore's got a pick for game one that starts tomorrow night. Celtics minus six here. There's a six and a half in the market. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with this to eight. I make this Boston minus eight, even after upgrading Dallas significantly over the course of their playoff run, which they've deserved. Uh, I've talked to some bookmakers this weekend, and what they've said is, is that they're, they've adjusted some of the power ratings based on the perception of Boston's path and how they didn't look great versus Indiana and all these teams that are perceived as weaker versus Dallas, who got past all these teams that were perceived to be better. But my question is, what's the gap here between the two? Because if we can upgrade one and downgrade the other, I still don't think we get to an, a, a line where at home the Boston Celtics should be less than seven and a half points here. Um, a lot of this is based off of, look, the Dallas Mavericks – have been phenomenal. The Denver Nuggets, when they were at the peak of the Western Conference and their price was the shortest to win the West, they were seven and a half point dogs in Boston. So we're saying that now the Dallas Mavericks are a point and a half better than that team. And you're like, well, yeah, they're in the they're in the finals and the Nuggets are not. Okay, sure. But like a lot of this goes into like the matchups and how this should be graded. I don't mind having even Dallas grade above where where uh, Denver was, but that doesn't get me to six or six and a half. Uh, how about this? Home favorites in game one of the finals, 17 and four against the spread last 21. Um, Boston has won the majority of the game ones the last two seasons. And they've done so by an average of 8.4 points. What's interesting here is that I do think that if we look over the course of these playoffs, Boston's ATS record is poor, which makes you go like, aha, they're overrated. I think what we've seen here in the final specifically is an overcorrection. So we've seen the de the Boston Celtics be overrated when they were versus the Cavs and the Heat without Jimmy Butler uh, and the Pacers in game one. They were overrated in those games. And then here we've seen a, a overcorrection by the market the other direction. So I, as I like the Celtics, I like them in this matchup and they're at home. I'll take Celtics minus six to six and a half, anything up to eight in game one. Okay, excellent. Matt Moore, Jay Money, keep an eye on buckets. You guys will be live after game one. We were live after game one, breaking down not only what happened in game one, but we'll also talk about the series price and the game two price immediately. We'll react to that live and we'll do that. We'll actually start that in the fourth quarter of game one. So make sure to check out youtube.com slash the action network for more. Excellent. And yeah, more J money segment of more money. The principal approves these two teachers. Thanks for stopping. Bye.